the young prince was in the tree a moment ago, smelling the tree, smelling the branch where that carcass was, and uh, almost seemingly confused as to, to where the carcass has gone. He was up there for a moment, and then he came down, and he's now smelling the ground underneath. But there doesn't seem to be anything. There wasn't much left last night, so all I can assume is he probably dropped what was left, and hyenas must have come past, as they do, and picked up whatever was left, and it is gone. There doesn't seem to be anything at all left there on the floor, and he's still trying to figure out <laughs> what has happened. It's possible he was off trying to go get a drink, and even another leopard maybe came up and stole what was left. It's very hard to say, folks. Very hard to say. We were not here. There, there seems to be some... You see, just in front of him, they said, there's some scuff marks on the ground. Can you see that? Just in front of him. Left, left. There, in front of him. Just in front of his paws. The ground seems a bit beaten up. Seems a little bit beaten up as if something was busy there. Not sure what. But this is amazing, amazing to see him. Look at those pupils. A cat, this is their time. He's been active. Okay, he was active. <laughs> oh, what a boy, hey? What a boy. They are so alert at this time of day. The temperatures, as I said before, are relatively cool. And he is in a very, very good mood. He looks quite happy. He looks very healthy. His eyes, if you see the pupils, they have the ability to completely dilate to massive proportions. Those of you with us last night, we were talking about vision, nocturnal vision and color vision. Look at those eyes. The bigger the pupil gets, like a lens on a camera, the more light that comes in. So it enables them to see far, far better at night. When we're looking at him last night, before we left, when the light was still good, his pupils were little pinpricks. And that is that difference. When you see cats at night or early in the morning when their pupils are still large, they have so much more of a wild characteristic to them. Really, really is something to behold. You see it in lions specifically when they, they have that almost maddening look in their eyes. Paul asks if leopards notice if it gets darker as they get older. I'm pretty sure they do. Um, the light just changes and also the temperatures change. So whether they're moving because it's dark or they're moving because it's cooler, it's debatable. But what I do know is that because they can see at night, they suddenly become a different animal. They are far less detectable at night than they are during the day and their stealth and camouflage is definitely something that the night assists in camouflaging. Moving at night is obviously the optimum time for these guys to move and it's far cooler. If you were with us yesterday he was spending most of his time just chilling in the shade here trying to avoid the heat and you can see now he's very alert. I don't think he's hungry but cats just they can't help themselves. They just cannot help themselves. If you've ever played with a cat with your hand in front of it and you scratch your hand on the ground or on the carpet, they just can't help but move and grab. It's just their instinctive ability to chase. And uh, that's why number one rule out in the bush with a cat is you never run. Because it can go from a defensive posture to one of, I will catch you now because you are running. You see, once again, he's looking up into the tree. He is perplexed as to where the remainder of his meat has gone. He can probably smell things around here, but we, there he is. He's up again. He's smelling again. What are you doing, boy? Absolutely beautiful. Look at that belly from the back. You can see it wobbling. He is full. He has eaten very, very well. Doesn't mean he won't eat again or kill again, but he's definitely uh, hungry enough to be moving. But while we stay here and see what Hassan gets up to, uh, we're going to go and see what Tristan is searching for as Hassan lies down. We'll send you over to Tristan and see what he's searching for this morning. And we're back, folks. Asana is up, and he's actually moving. You can't clearly see him there, but he's, he looks like he's showing some interest, and we're not quite sure what. But he's moving very slowly. Oh, now he's stopped, and he's busy licking himself. We're going to try a reposition for you now. But he was just here, right next to the car. He moved away a short bit into the thick bush there. See if we can get a better visual. 
There you can hear the Franklins alarming in the background. I don't know if you can hear that. Jack, Jack, Jack. I'm not a very good Franklin caller. There you can get his, you can see him again now. Um, Sep. <laughs> there he is. Look at that tail. Characteristic tail of the leopard. You can see how it sticks out in the bush. That is what cubs follow when the mother moves. Is just that little white tail. But he's moving towards the drainage line. So we're going to have to start up and see if we can follow. Just give us a moment, folks, if we can relocate him. Not sure if, what he's up to. But he's moving, which is awesome. It's quite something to follow a cat as it moves, because we are in a Land Rover and they are not. And uh, they just whine through the bushes when we have to sort of go around and, and do what we can. So just hold on there, Seb. Watch out for the thorns. Yeah, he's definitely interested in something up ahead going nice and slowly here we obviously don't want to influence whatever it is that he's up to quite nice these short wheelbase Land Rovers they they do maneuver through the bushes quite nicely I've driven big Land Cruisers before and when you drive one of those you should actually officially be given a skipper's license because it's like driving a boat going to pull forward here and then I'm going to switch off because he's busy stalking. Oh. <laughs> Can you all hear the Franklins now taking off for the, the Spurfowl, the Natal Spurfowl. He was he was quite interested in them, but he didn't do a very good stalk, I'll be honest with you. Kind of like the, the brazen stalk of a child that's trying to sneak up behind an adult who pretends it doesn't know that it's there. But now he's got his face in the trees there. Let's move a little bit further up. It's possible the spurfile are on eggs, and he wouldn't be against raiding a nest. Uh, Spurfowls, guinea fowl, they hide their, their nest just underneath a bush like that and it is the right time of year for them to do so and that call that they did as they flew away, that very loud tick, 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 it's to try and attract the predator away, it's almost like a distraction, like follow me and leave my eggs be and uh, potentially that's what they did but he kind of had a little look in there, he didn't come out with anything but he's, he's still doing his thing over there, Seb, can you see him? How's that for you, bud? Perfect. Look at that, eh? He's concentrated. He's not he's not a fully grown male. I believe he's turning two on the first of February, so he's still a youngster. He definitely doesn't have his skills down completely yet, and he's a uh, you can hear, I don't know if you can hear, but there's all sorts of birds in the in the trees. They're starting to make alarm calls and starting to chatter. And uh, they all know the leopard's coming. And they all started to get very excited and very upset with him. But uh, he's not too bothered. Let's see if we can continue, folks. It is starting to get a little bit thick over there, but we'll, we'll do the best that we can. But while I, yeah. Raya asked the question, are there any albino leopards about? I've never seen one. Um, I don't know, to be honest, this is only my first week here in the Sabi Sands. So, but I've not heard of one in the Sabi Sands. I do think it is, it is something that occurs in nature, but they don't do very well because of their coloration. The white coloration, they don't survive. So it's not actually a trait that follows through very, very well. Camouflage is their number one success story, and without it, there's a problem. So, folks, we can, we've uh, managed to uh, to find the the little prince once again. He just crossed the drainage line, not far from where we we lost him, and uh, he's sitting there cleaning himself. And uh, it stopped now, but uh, Natal Spurfowl has brazenly been <laughs> coming quite close to him and calling quite loudly, but he's now moved away. 
but uh, typical of what happens with, with predators, what they do when they're spotted sometimes by something, they'll just pretend that they don't care and they'll clean themselves. Sometimes they'll just sleep or they'll just walk. There he's up again, a typical tail waggle. Absolutely beautiful boy, this. We are very fortunate to be with him this morning. Uh, Seb was just mentioning that it's an absolute pleasure for him, his first safari back, and this is what he gets. We're joined with uh, Johan next to us from Jakarta Camp. He's just making space. We're going to try to follow Hassan up this little drainage line here, see if we can uh, see if we can stay with him. Let's, if you'd like us to, of course. <laughs> I know I would like to, so let's go, let's go. We're just going to reverse back a little bit. We're going to go up here, Seb. You happy for that? Hold on, hold on, hold on, folks. Those of you back home, just hold on because this is going to get a little bit bumpy as we just climb up. Oh, okay, that might not work. <laughs> While I navigate this riverbed in our wonderful vehicle, uh, we're going to go back to Tristan who has some of those small little critters for you. So we're going to navigate, find the, him for you, hopefully again, and uh, we'll be back with you shortly. What a silhouette, ladies and gentlemen, what a silhouette. Indeed, we've managed to, to follow through the thick bush and come out on the other side. We are now sitting at Chelapan, and Hosanna is come up to the pan but hasn't had a drink yet I don't quite know why he's hiding his head behind the branch there of that beautiful jackalberry maybe he's can see or smell something that we haven't quite detected yet but he sat there for a few minutes just about 10 yards before he moved to where he is he sat for a little while oh he is smelling folks definitely there's communication going on along that tree and he is a young leopard he is in the territory of other male leopards and female leopards and there is all sorts of communication signals that have probably been deposited against that tree leopards for one are renowned for scratching and clawing against the tree first of all to clean all the the debris and meat and mud out of their claws because their claws are essential for them to climb and that can leave a scent from the feet and then also they also quite often will will urinate or scent mark spray on a tree there and so this young prince has not yet claimed a territory he's way too young for that he's just walking around and he's just basically smelling and picking up on all of the sensual signs the bush has to offer. Safari Heart is interested to know what, what Hosanna's curled tail means and it means nothing really, it's just the way that they walk. Um, a leopard when it walks has got a curled tail, that's how they move and I think it's got something to do with the evolution of cubs following the adults. It, you, it just bobs around behind them and that little white tip to the tail is what the cubs follow. But yes, he is thirsty. Uh, we wonder if he had drank last night, but having a protein meal like he did have last night and for the last day and a half definitely allows for or need, provides a need to drink. And uh, there he's lapping up the water. There's not the nicest looking water out there, folks. We are blessed with, with filtered water. These animals, they survive on, on, on these pans. These pans are essential for their survival, and they also have a very strong constitution. If we had to drink this water that's been sitting here quite stagnant, there is evidence of elephant dung. Uh, there's evidence of there was a lot of mud. It's been wallowed in probably by warthogs, probably by elephants as well, a little bit of splashing. But yet this cat will drink it down. There will be no untoward negative effects. But if we drank it, we would definitely be needing some of those uh, those rich man, poor man toilet paper squares for some point later in the day because it would probably cause us to, to have diarrhea. Absolutely beautiful shot that, Seb. Thank you. Can you notice, folks, his ears are constantly searching. Obviously, he's intent on drinking, but the ears are moving left and right. Absolutely beautiful young cat. Just listen to the sounds of the bush for a moment, folks. 
You had the woodland kingfisher in the background. I will not try and mimic it. It is a very difficult call to mimic. But I can hear the grey-headed bushrike. Oh, there's a brazen plover that just landed where he was. Look at that light. There, just zoom in there, Seb. That plover, three-banded plover. He came in and landed pretty much where the leopard was drinking. He's not bothered. He can quickly flap away if needs be, looking for all sorts of little little worms, small crustaceans, absolutely anything that might be on the, the mud surface. Oh, here he's coming up to us here, Seb. Let's have a look at Osana. Just in front of the car here, folks. Just be over my shoulder, so to speak. He is completely camouflaged in the dapple light with that small vegetation. Hidden behind the guari bush, I believe uh, Tristan was talking to you about a guari bush just before. And he is, he is lying down again. I'm just going to try reposition so we can get him back in shot. So from the plover and the leopard, Tristan has got some tracks of the featherless birds. Well, not the featherless, but the feathered type. Tristan indeed. Unfortunately, Tristan is on a walk somewhere else and you're with Steve and uh, Seb and we have a male spotted cat who does not need a smartphone, Ralph, to wake up in the morning. He, uh, he has his own alarm clock. It is the birds and I'm not sure if you can hear it, but in the background we can hear the green-backed Cameroptera, that very metallic sort of sound. He's up and mobile again. Lots of intention in his eyes, folks. Not sure what he can see. We have another vehicle that's just joining the site. I mean, look at the look at the posturing. Look at how his feet are slowly being put down. He's definitely can ah, oh, he can see the Franklins again. <laughs> oh, that didn't work last time, boy. That didn't work last time. Kate K asks, do leopards hear the same audio visual that we audio that we do? And I'm pretty sure they can hear at a much lower frequency than we can, but I'm I'm not certain at what degree that is. I know elephants can hear at a, below five hertz. We're in about the range of about 20, 21, and cats seem to hear things that we don't hear. There are definitely messages that they communicate to each other, and messages that they communicate to us that we seem to not hear at all. Um, so I'm pretty sure they hear it at much different frequency to us, but what that might be, I really am not too sure. So his uh, attempt at the Franklin has failed. <laughs> he is now coming back to the coolness of the pan. Hello, boy. Just commenting with Seb just before how last night, um, I, well, yesterday afternoon, I spent the entire afternoon with this beautiful cat, and while I was driving back to camp, I realized that this is my job. <laughs> my job is to come and sit with a leopard and, and see him. And it, this is very hard work, folks. Very, very hard work. Um, it is not for the, the weak-minded. You must understand this takes a lot of attention, a lot of diligence, and the hours are unbelievable. And uh, I have a smartphone that actually works. Ralph, you might want to check the settings on your, your alarms there because it doesn't sound very smart if your alarm is not working properly. And I believe Mr. Tristan yesterday morning had some issues with his smartphone. So maybe it's just January. Maybe it's just January. And uh, maybe he... Um, I don't know. He had some excuses about his phone yesterday morning. Anyway, maybe he could elaborate more on that. But apparently there's someone in camp running around switching off alarms. Why anyone would be doing that, I'm very unsure. Good morning, good morning. We've just got someone from Juma joining us here. We'll move forward for you, okay? And then you can have a look. Oh, 
thanks. He was just informing us that we still have a little bit of a light on, on our vehicle. We were out a bit early this morning, and uh, the light of the vehicle, these beautiful little lights on the side here, assist and obviously adding to the gold. So we are still going to sit here with the sauna. He's